Welcome to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. You know what? We're away enjoying a vacation as we enter into 2020, but we didn't want to forget about you. So there is a we're going to rebroadcast the prayer of Jabez. So sit back and enjoy and be blessed. And that's uh, a rebroadcast of the JBS Prayer January 2nd. But tune in January 9th because I know we have some worry warts yes. out there. Are you a worry wart? I know I'm a little bit of a worry wart. So just we want to be able to give you some information on what worry can do to you. What is it really? Mm -hmm. How you should deal with it and how we can put our worries to work for us. So tune in again January 9th and on Wave 94, 5 to 6. Wait a minute. You're saying that you can put your worry to work for you? That's right. We always do. So mark your calendar, uh, January 9th, 5 o'clock for that particular show. But in the meantime, we want to recognize our sponsor, Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Give Dr. Elton Powell a call at 850-402-9061. He can help you with uh, auto injury, arthritis, back pains, diabetes, headaches, weight loss for 2020. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. My name is Anne-Marie Baker, and I used to have severe, excruciating right arm and neck pain. Thanks to spinal decompression therapy from Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, I no longer have any pain or discomfort, and my issues were resolved without having any surgery. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center has helped me enjoy my life again. At Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, we unlock your potential to be the best version of you and build your body to excellent health. Hi, my name is Dr. Powell, and we take pride in giving you fast and friendly service that is tailored to your needs. We provide safe, comfortable, and effective treatments using state-of-the-art equipment. Life is full of adjustments, so get yourself realigned for better, healthier future today. Call 402-9061. That's 402-9061. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Online at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Become a stone builder and support Living Stones children and family programs and services. Help us strengthen and build healthy relationships among family members and fathers and mothers to be active in the lives of their children. Tune in to the Stone Builders Hour on Wave 94, Thursdays 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Donate online at welivingstones.org or mail your gift to Living Stones, P.O. Box 6747, Tallahassee, Florida, 32314. Remember, your donations and gifts are tax deductible. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary and me, yes, me, JC. The Almighty truly answers prayers, and we know for a fact because it's happened in our lives. Yes. Pastor and I prayed for a Stone Builders partner and partners. So one of you out there might be a partner too. And God sent Dr. Elton Powell of Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Yes, so we is. are very grateful for him yes. uh, joining the show. Yes. Previous shows we addressed health, eating, mm -hmm. and programming your spirit for success. I love that. I mm -hmm. think it's important. Programming your spirit mm -hmm. for success. God gives us men and women with the education and power to help us heal our bodies, mind, and spirit. Yes, he does. One of the things that you find in Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, and I hope you hear that word, right, right in, in his, his sight, sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals thee. That's what he says. I yes, am Jehovah is. Rapha. Yes, he does. The Lord who heals. And that's why, you know, truly because Dr. Uh, Powell, he treats uh, auto injuries, uh, arthritis, uh, hernia the disc, diabetes, neck pains, Sounds spinal good. decompression therapy. Uh oh, and you know what goes back to that weight loss? Uh -huh. He has a weight loss program, but along with that weight loss program, you got to start eating right. Uh -huh. You just can't and be throwing down people. 
pizza and ice cream. Hey, I've been doing good on my ice cream. Yes, he has. I've I cut have back on witness. my ice cream, even though I had some pizza ice cream the other day. But praise God. But, you know, we have to have a focus of when you are getting to that that mode of where we really want to make changes. And now that we're at the year end, yes. uh, 2020 is just days away. And many of y'all... Um, or, you know, like, got to get ready. We got to make that New Year's resolution. And uh, because of, like in Luke uh, 9, 2, uh, Luke said he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Yeah, all right. So Dr. Powell, he's here to help heal that illness. And God will bless people with talents. You know, we all get a gift. And they gave Dr. Powell a gift that he can help you heal thyself. All right. You know, I think it's important since we've always been talking about health and healing and programming our spirits for success. Maybe we can invite Dr. Elton Powell on as a guest so he can go into deep, more details on the conditions he treats, uh, the things that you have to do to enhance yourself. I know he has other kinds of products that you can take. Yes. So I think it's important for us to hear uh, what I call, uh, consider him as an expert. Radio family, you don't have to wait. Call him at 850-402-9061 for an appointment or a consultation. And you know, Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. I don't know about you, but I think I want to be healed. I want to be saved. (laughs) And all I have to do is, previously I said to uh, be right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, that he will heal me and save me. I think we just need to focus more on that word, because remember, the Bible is our operating manual and it does have all the instructions for keeping us healthy, wealthy, and, and wise. wise. I'm seeking knowledge all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and we all should be. But praise God. And just yesterday was uh, Christmas Day that uh, Christian Dome celebrates. And, uh, and it's also a time of, um, of great joy. Also, great sadness. sadness. Yes, I know many a Christmas when I was growing up, it wasn't a happy time because of a lot of family issues and dynamics. The only good thing about it was my uh, sister Ingrid; her birthday was on Christmas Day, so we always had ice cream and cake. <laughs> if anything went on with the family, we had a chance to celebrate my sister's Ingrid's uh, birthday. Uh, so that was a blessing unto itself. But. Um, Oh, that's right. We're supposed to be talking about the prayer of Uh, Jabez. Jabez. Yes. So Jabez, the prayer of Jabez was found in 1 Chronicles 4, 9. But you got to go back to the beginning of uh, chapter, uh, when you go to uh, chapter 4. And he talks about the sons of Judah. Yeah. And after they talk about the sons of Judah, then there's a whole lineage that they talk about that finally gets down to where it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. In chapter 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God, uh, Jehovah, uh, Jah, the Almighty, granted him that which he requested. Well, I know when we talk about Jabez, we always says, who is he? Because remember I said at the beginning, it was just two lines from scriptures. <laughs> and yet um, I know uh, Pastor Stephen Wilkinson wrote a whole book around it. Um, he talked about it being a little prayer, great prizes. 
And sometimes, you know, we feel that it's selfish to ask for things for ourselves. But, you know, in essence, if we're following God's flaw, we definitely know that we need to be fulfilling that and being blessed. Indeed, because it did said that God's yes. going to heal us. God's going to save us if we just follow his scriptures. And it's interesting that there is no mention anywhere else in the scriptures of Jabez, except in First Chronicles uh, 4, 9 and 10. Yes. But what do we do know, Pastor mentioned that he was from the tribe of Judah. And if we look at First Chronicles 4, 1 through 8, it details members of the tribe of Judah, just as Pastor mentioned, then Jabez is mentioned in 4, 9. But if you look at First Chronicles and we go through just a little bit of a study, and remember we said we need to be studying line upon line, yeah. precept upon precept. precept. First Chronicle 3, 1 through 9 talks about the family of David. Yes. And 3, 10 through 24, the family of Solomon. And 4, 1 through 8, the family of Judah. So it's obvious that Jabez was in great company. Yes, and he, he had great ancestors. And so therefore, we are the descendants of Jabez. So definitely, I want to re just reread that scripture that uh, Pastor read, because mine's just a little bit different. You know, it's a little bit different version. Yeah, I was reading from the, uh, the uh, new, I was reading from the King James Version. Okay, but this one says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted what he requested. So just remember, if we ask, it shall be given unto us. Yes. What? Press down, shaking Shake together, together and running over will men give unto our bosom. So we need to remember that and just remember who was Jabez and that we are truly the descendants of Jabez. And when you look at that scripture about Jabez, when, when uh, the mother called his name because she bore him in pain. Mm -hmm. But then they say Jabez called on the God of Israel because his brethren, he is more honorable than his brethren. So there was a lot of wickedness that was going on during that time oh, period I'm sure. that he was exposed to things just like we're right now today. Yeah. We make a choice of doing right things and wrong things. Correct. Uh, right now we have uh, domestic violence and we have sex trafficking. We have a lot of uh, drug abuse. We have a lot of uh, shooting and gang situations. But you can either be involved in that or make a conscious choice not to and to serve the Almighty. And that's what Jabez was doing. He was he made a conscious effort. And Mama says so. His mama says so, right? <laughs> that she bore him in pain. Uh, and I know you always say he must have had a big head. So <laughs> there was a lot of there were, his birth had more pain associated with it than what was possibly normal. Yeah. If there's such a thing as normal. Because because uh, historically the tribe of Judah just like J.C., it consisted of the sentence of the fourth son of Jacob and Leah. So Judah was the leading tribe of the kingdom, and King David and the royal line down to Yeshua belonged to this tribe. And also there are many prophets uh, in the tribe of Judah, like uh, Isaiah, wow. Amos, mm. Habakkuk, All right. Joel, Micah, Obadiah, Zechariah, and Ze Ze Zephaniah. Yeah, sometimes I get tied up on some of these, <laughs> all these ions. <laughs> well, one of the things that's really interesting, if you look at those list of those prophets, one of the things that I'm always interested in, in terms of where prophets are in the past, the present, and the future, Isaiah was really a foreteller of things. He not only spoke against the uh, tribes when they weren't doing well, but he is also the forerunner of Daniel, the, the prophet. And we know Daniel had great vision and great sights. And Isaiah was also the foreteller of Yeshua, the yes. Christ. Because if you see in the New Testament, uh, Peter and all them and even all of the Pharisees spoke about how everything was being confirmed in the book of Isaiah. So this is a great lineage to be associated with that Jabez was part of this line of descendants. You know, we should um, 
now that we're heading into 2020, we should do uh, a show around the minor prophets. They call them minor prophets, but they were huge yes. in their word. Yes, they were. <laughs> the, and not only minor prophets, but also when we talk about keeping the commandments and the statutes of Yeshua, I, I believe that we really need to get back to the holy feast of God because those were the things that he gave us along with the Ten Commandments. So we yeah. need to kind of spend some time with that. And coming up in the spring, we will start the feast. So let's um, move forward and talk about some things. And I think we will be right back after this commercial ads. Yeah, we'll break. Hey, stay tuned. My name is Rodney Vickers, and I suffered from excruciating pain and discomfort in both legs. And I was told there was nothing that I could do. After consulting with Dr. Powell at the Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, I began a nerve restoration program, and today I am able to walk and run without any pain, and I am in better shape than I've been in years. At Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, we unlock your potential to be the best version of you and build your body to excellent health. Hi, my name is Dr. Powell, and we take pride in giving fast and friendly service that is tailored to your needs. We provide safe, comfortable, and effective treatments using state-of-the-art equipment. Life is full of adjustments, so get yourself realigned for a better, healthier future today. Call 402-9061. That's 402-9061. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Online at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Let's dissect the Jabez prayer. Okay. First, consider the attitude of Jabez. He was honorable, mm -hmm. more honorable than his brothers were told. Why was he more honorable than his brothers were not told? But it may have to do with the nature of his prayer. And if you look at his lineage, look at the people yes. that came before him and after him. They were powerful. Yes, they were. And one of the things that we know about David, he was what? A man yeah, after, after God's heart. Lord's heart. Yes. Right. He, he knew how to pray. Yes. Even in the midst of trouble. Yes. Even, even in the midst when of his was, sin. Yes. <laughs> even when he was not up to standards, he knew that he had to prostrate himself when it came to prayer and to ask for forgiveness from his God. So if Jabez comes from that lineage and Solomon and the whole tribe of Judah, we know that he was an honorable man. I agree. And uh, because there's two characteristics for honorable prayers. And uh, the first one being uh, earnest. Mm -hmm. uh, being earnest means to be intense zealous, sincere, and determined. Wow, is that the, somebody like you? <laughs> that, that praise God. Yes, it is. And I get that from James 5, 16. We're told that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail much in. Praise God. Because yes. God want to hear you, you know, shout out for glory. Yes, shout out. And you got to stir up your gifts of your angels. You got to stir up your gifting so your angels come to, to help you in through your situations. So that means... You do have to speak it out loud. That's right. Uh, God can read your mind. He knows what's in your heart, but he wants to hear it. The second uh, part of the characteristics of an honorable prayer is humility. Yes. And sometimes yes. we are not the humblest of people. <laughs> you got that right. But First Peter 5, 3, 6 to 7 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time, due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And one of the things I always tell people, I always let God fight my battles. Yes. Even though sometimes you want to hit back, sometimes you want to strike back, sometimes you want to uh, be the one who has the last word. It just says there that if you humble yourself He'll exalt you in due season. So I always know that God has my back and that he's going to set me up for a greater blessing at a later time. The earnest, fervent prayer that is prayed in true humility yes. is honorable before God. I love that God is always waiting 
for us to take our cares to him. You know that? He's just <laughs> waiting. waiting. <laughs> when you think about it, when all of the... You don't want you to be from begging. No, but he's waiting for you to actually just cast your cares upon him. And even Yeshua said that, cast your cares upon me and I'll give you rest. Mm. So if we're saying it in humility, if we're actually being really honest and earnest with ourselves, we can cast it upon Yeshua yes. and he will give us rest in due season. What a mighty and awesome God. Yes, he is. All so the much. time. Yes. Wow, praise God. So, you know, another aspect of Jabez was his attitude and he directed his prayers to God. Uh, because we are to worship the Lord our God and serve him alone. Yeshua, Jesus, uh, taught us to address our prayers in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And to direct such a prayer to God, demonstrate that one is trusting in and thus dependent on him for everything that is needed. And this is a simple prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Yes. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Oh, thy will be, be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. I just have to say, if you ask for it on earth, it's also done in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Mm. That's why that's a lot, a lot of folks that want to do that. Yes. They lot, we're not doing that out here in Christian Dome. That's what, we're believers here. Praise God. But you do have to forgive those who trespass against us. And here's yeah. what it is. What ties back into Jabez. Okay. But deliver us from evil. And Jabez asked God to keep me out of pain. To keep me away from evil. But remember, he also said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So yes. we got to remember that little part, because that was one of the things that Jabez asked for, that he does not cause harm. And God granted his request. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. I just can't stop calling him mighty God, <laughs> because I know I'm not worthy. True. You know, I feel so humble and so low. And that's why he loved his son, uh, Jesus, so much. He gave his son, who basically gave us a playbook on how to live our lives and how to survive. And here he is. He laid down his life. He only had 33 years in order to capture who he was. Yeah. As a young person, and then who he was, because it gets kind of quiet between, uh, you know, those uh, after uh, three years before thirty three, uh, after a teenager, where you know, where was he at? So, but he was in process of learning who he was until That's true. his time came and his anointing came upon him, and then uh, he changed the world. So praise God. And sometimes I think we don't know how powerful God is. In the sense that we know him to be spirit. But just imagine if you were Moses and going back and when mm. Moses was stepping on that ground, what did God tell him? Take off your shoes because you're stepping on holy mm. ground. And not only that, but he said he could not show him all his self. He was only going to show him what? His backside. <laughs> so you know if gone and then when Moses came down from uh, getting the Ten Commandments, God was so bright from his backside wow. that people made Moses put on a veil because they couldn't stand the glory. <laughs> so can you imagine if we saw oh, all of God glory. and what it's going to be like? So I think that's what we need to start thinking about. We need to start they were living. Scared. Yes, they were. Come on, you shine. <laughs> <laughs> shine like a star. Oh God. But that's what we need to do. We need wow. to start living large for God. We need to be that light, that brightness, Grace. that when people see it, they're they drawn to it. You. They want to know what is it that we have. Mm. And I think another characteristic of the Jabez petition, he requested a personal blessing. Mm. 
To ask God's blessing is to ask him to bestow divine favor. And there's nothing wrong with requesting God to bless us specifically. I think part of that uh, Jabez prayer when he asked for it, um, he said that one of the things we need to look at is when you take on the big ass, you're also, also taking on more responsibility, right. more opportunity to make a mark for God. And depending on that word territory, uh, it means it can mean coast or borders. It could be your homestead, your house, your home. It could mean My another education. home. Yes, it could mean a lot of Relationships. things. Relationships. So Jabez was asking very specifically for him, but are you being very specific mm. when you ask God for something? Mm. Are you just making it general? Because you know when you ask God for money, He can give you a penny too. Right. <laughs> so being specific <laughs> in your prayers. But one of the things that I think we need to look at um, when we say, um, Jabez says, when we uh, enlarge my territory, that for him, he wanted something more than just what he had. Right. And, you know, when I think about where I came from, and I know I was I was uh, raised in a housing development, as they call it now, but they were called the projects when I was growing up. <laughs> that was not my end. Praise God. That was only my beginning. And I saw something much greater for myself. And so I, I told my parents, I used to always tell them that. They always thought I w was being smart. <laughs> but I always told them that this is not where I'm going to live. I'm going to be Beyond this. Mm -hmm. And so looking back over my history and time, I've really done well for ourselves, our children. So we've been blessed. Yes. So the psalmist says in Psalm 28, 9, if you pray it, save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. So Jabez was not doing anything unusual right. to ask God to enlarge his territory. This seems uh, to relate to material prosperity, but it's certainly scriptural for us to pray that God will bless us materially. Praise God, because uh, I remember uh, the JC, I've known her since <laughs> 1968. Uh, so I'm not going to say how old that is, but y'all do the math. I'll uh, be quiet. But they were so poor, they couldn't afford the O. <laughs> the O-R. <laughs> the O-R, they were poor. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. And to see how God has blessed their family from then forward and all my brothers and all sisters. her brothers sisters and siblings have been mightily blessed so where you are doesn't determine where you must stay but you must really invest in yourself mm -hmm. time energy education reading you must want to change and that's what Romans 12 12 to be transformed by yeah, renewing of your, your mind, mind. Yes. And once you renew your mind then you can move forward and it just tells you right there and uh, based on scriptural is uh, in Matthew's uh, 7 ask and it shall be given to you, you. Mm -hmm. seek See? and you shall find yes. knock and it shall be open unto you for everyone that asks receives Seems, and he yes. that seek finds right. and to him that knock the door shall be open and so that is basically Jabez of a scriptural yes it is with the almighty yes it is so it's time for us to go ahead. Let's bless uh, some of our sponsors because uh, I need healing. I pray that <laughs> I pray that let's hear from our sponsors like Dr. Powell and uh, some other sponsors at uh, I think the marketplace.com is coming up. The marketplacereview.com and we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Tune in to the Stone Builders Hour, a unique talk show hosted by Pastor Gary and Elder JC. Every Thursday at 5 o'clock on Wave 94.1. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are. But I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road. But I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. 
Welcome back to the Stone Builders with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. And you know what? I am truly enjoying talking about Jabez. I love it. Yeah, Jabez is awesome. But you know, Philippians 4, 6 talks about be anxious for nothing, mm. but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Yes. That's that humbleness. Yes. Let your requests be known to God. Mm, I love it. And that's what Jabez was doing through his prayers. And even though he's just a footnote compared to other scriptures, yes. we are learning so much uh, from him. I just believe that... Um, Scriptures give no promises that if we do certain things uh, for God, then he will prosper us. And I think sometimes people get into that habit thinking I'm going to ask and it's going to be giving. Uh, but Matthew 6.33 is very specific. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Again, we keep talking about that right uh, alignment with God and all these things shall be added unto you. But in Matthew 6 33, the Lord simply said that if we serve him faithfully, he will provide for us. Psalms 25 5 says, lead me in thy truth and teach me. So here again, teach me, O Lord, mm -hmm. for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Praise God. So I think that's why Jabez pleaded to God that his hand would be with him to provide protection and guidance. And I think one of the things when we talk about um, that guidance and how to be great and how to be protected, sometimes we falter, uh, believing that God's not answering our prayers. God doesn't hear us. Yes. But I know for a fact he hears us all, all the, time. the time. And one of the things that that's part of uh, God's uh, Yeshua's prayer. Remember when he was uh, praying over Lazarus and getting yes. ready to raise him from the dead and he had to specifically only say Lazarus because he probably was <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody from up. the dead. And that has happened because <laughs> yeah. after his death, there were people who came back. Yeah, and so we have to much. be yes. cognizant of that. But one of the things that he did was he, when he prayed to God to raise Lazarus, he says, I'm not doing this for me because I already know the truth. He says, I'm doing it for those around me so that they yeah. can see your greatness. So I just want you to know when you pray and you're not doing it just for you, you want others yeah. to see how God is blessing you. But God also in Revelations 3.20, I love this verse because I think it's so pertinent to what when we ask for something that we really sincerely be faithful. But it says, and this is Yeshua speaking in Revelations, talking to the dead church. All right, church, come alive. <laughs> it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, if, if anyone <laughs> hears my voice and opens the door, mm. I will come into him wow. and dine with him and he with me. Mm. To him who overcomes. Saints, we're overcomers. overcomers. It's in our DNA. I, yes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame. Because remember, Jesus says, I came not to change the word, but to fulfill it. But he always said, I overcame mm -hmm. and sat down with my father on his throne. Praise he God. who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. All right, church folks. All right, church. I hope you're hearing and listening. God, uh, you know, God the Almighty has said that he will hear and respond to the prayers of his people. He may not always give us what we ask for or when we ask for it in exactly the way that we ask, but he is the source of every good and perfect gift. And that's in James one uh, seventeen, because every perfect gift yeah, is from, from above, above. Yes. and comes down from the Father of light with whom whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Praise God. Therefore, we can trust Him, yeah, Almighty. Yes. Jehovah, to answer our prayers by providing what He knows best 
that we need in harmony with his will. And just as he did with the prayer of Jabez. You know, Jabez, he expressed a petition that God would keep him from evil. Yes. And Yeshua indicated that his disciples should pray for God's preservation and deliverance as he taught them to say, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That was a part of that Matthew 13 scripture. I think part of um, one of the things that when you talk about, uh, Pastor Gary, about all of the things that we look at in terms of asking for blessings, asking for God to enlarge our territory, there is an underlying current that you may not be successful at everything. And sometimes the larger the territory you're asking for, sometimes there is this expectation that failure is guaranteed. But hey, remember Ford, the car company? That's right. He failed how many times? I think it was seven, eight, or nine he times. Went bankrupt. Yes, until he found the right formula. And look today. Ford Company, Motor Company is still here today. So it's struggling. Just, yeah, well, that's true. I, but but I think all car companies all are struggling. Yeah, because that's putting out a new model every year. But I think that we have to prayerfully look at the fact that there may be some failures in the things that we do because we are taking on a bigger blessing. And I know personally with our own business that one of the things that we've always looked at is how can we be successful? And what is the measure of success? What your measure of success may not be my measure. Uh, we always looked at having a balanced lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It was never yeah. about having a lot of anything. It was just about having enough and being able to maintain our lifestyle. So one of the things that you have to consider is really looking at the response of the Almighty who granted him what he requested. So the Lord has promised us, and, we, and Pastor read that previously, ask that it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. So I think some of those things have to be looked at, but you have to be also strong enough to withstand anything that is thrown at you. Yeah. You have to be flexible. We always say when someone throws the bricks and stones, you got to know how to duck and duck dodge. Or put up your whole body of armor. armor. True. You got a shield. You, right. got a, you got a sword. You got a helmet. Yes. And you also have, have to be flexible and adaptable. Just because I, I was always taught, just because someone says no, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like what you're doing or won't buy what you're wanting to sell. Sometimes you just have to find the right key to to unlock that 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 contract. Because both of us have been in sales, yes. we know how to um, basically make people comfortable right. with your selling. You have to be able to make people feel as though they're doing it in essence, instead of you actually telling them what to do. And a lot of that has to do, comes with experience, comes with being in prayerful. Remember, I'm going to go back to that original thing I've read, having a right relationship with God, with God, keeping his commandments, keeping his statutes. And I think one of the things you keep bringing up about 2020, I think one of the things that we need to look forward to is how do we keep right alignment with God? Yes. How do we keep his commandments? How do we keep Keep his statutes, and I think that's the we could have a whole series for the whole year just uh, right. on just those um, kinds of topics. Praise God! So, you know, when Jabez prayer, when he prayed, uh, "Keep me from evil," uh, or "Keep me from pain," he could have expressed his prayer this way: um, "Let me not experience the grief which my name implies and which my sins would produce." Mm. Or how about this? Grant that the grief implied in my name may not come upon me. That's so key because, you know, the Lord says in Psalms 37, 4 is I delight myself in the Lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. 
and the blessing of the Lord truly is rich, and he adds no sorrow with them in Proverbs 10.22. Mm. That, that's why, so we, JC and I, advocate um, studying the word uh, precept by precept. Line upon line. Because there is so much when you bring the whole scripture together that it really starts giving you insight to with the truth. And the I word says that. the truth shall set you free. And only when you and that's how the that's how the Bible has been written. And and it's not that you can't read the Bible from beginning to end, but there are just many a things that you have to look at when you are actually studying that word. Because you know sometimes you could read a passage and it doesn't mean anything. And sometimes when you're studying and you go back over it two or three times and about the third time you go, oh, that's what that means. And then you start, I love my Bible because it has all of the scriptures that is relative to that verse or how that verse came about. So then I can start digging. And by the time you start digging for the truth and looking through it, you'll find that you have spent some time in that word. And that's one of the things I think with Jabez that um, I believe that God wants his hand and his spirit to be involved with what you're doing. And sometimes we could just tell him, Father, please do this in me because I can't do it alone. It's too big for me. And you step out in faith to do and say the things that only come from his hand. And I think that's what Jabez did. Yeah. It was too big for him. There were things he couldn't do. So he asked God to help him. And afterwards, your spirit's going to be shouting, God did that. Nobody else. God carried me, gave me the words, gave me the power. And it's wonderful. And I couldn't recommend more highly living in this spiritual dimension, this supernatural dimension. Remember, you have God's DNA, so you can do anything. <laughs> you got to do is follow his commandments. Yes. Uh, do not sin because God is holy. Yes. And perfect. And he doesn't allow sin at all. And, and just go to James 4, 7. His father... I resist the enemy in yes. every form yes. that he comes against me. Yes. That's my finances. That's my health. Yep. That's my mental capacity. That's, that's in every area of my life. I require my body because a lot of the things, that's why Dr. Powell is so important from the spinal uh, uh, dynamic spine and wellness center because I require my body to be strong and healthy and I enforce it with your word. I reject the curse and I enforce life into this body. And so that's what Jabez was also praying. Yes. Because uh, don't cause me no pain. Yeah. We don't know what the situation was. That's true. They don't go into, uh, he, you know, he might not, not have any money to do to increase his territory. He, <laughs> he might have been. We don't you know, know what his brothers right, were up right, to. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> he was all credit. audible. <laughs> <laughs> you you got, his, got, got a hold of his social security number. He <laughs> was using up his credit. So when he went to use it, he got the climb. Right. <laughs> I love the fact that a lot of what we consider natural progression from more blessing to more uh, territory, that we have the need for supernatural power. And you think about the apostles. They were really, in essence, they were just fishermen, yeah. cowards kind of, <laughs> uh, just like Peter denied um, Jesus when he was arrested and a girl came. What would you do in that situation? Yeah, uh -huh. right, because it might be the same thing. But he once he sent the Holy Spirit, it, he gave ordinary believers uh, a touch of greatness, yeah. filling them with his miraculous power to spread the gospel. And you notice in Luke's account that the phrase filled with the spirit is often linked to a consequence. They spoke with boldness. Only God at work through them could account for the miracles and mass conversions that followed. So when we ask for God's mighty presence like Jabez yes. and the early church did, we will also see tremendous results that can be explained only as from the hand of God. What strikes me about the early church was that believers continually sought to be filled by God. 
They were known as a community who spent hours and even days in prayers together. Uh, when's the last time you spent days? Waiting upon God and asking for his power. They were longing to receive more of God's hand, a fresh spiritual infilling of God's power that would turn impending certain failure into a miracle and make their extraordinary assignment possible. Remember when we um, used to go to um, the church in Destin, uh, Florida? Oh, yes, yeah. And it was a spirit-filled church, yeah. uh, very Pentecostal, prophetic. yeah, prophetic church. But one of uh, one of the groups, and they had people coming from all, we'll have to get the name of it, but they were had people coming from all over the, over world, the world to come to their prophetic ministries. And one group that came that I'll never forget was from the Korean church. Right. And they they South came Korea. to uh, share with the group how the spirit was just filling their home churches because they still, even though South Korea, they still wanted to be able, and there are some large churches in, in South Korea, they still wanted to have that personal touch. So they would be in person's homes, people's basements. But they always talked about how the spirit would travail and they would be in there sometimes for days. <laughs> oh, and and, and, oh, and Pastor and I are looking at each other like, for days? <laughs> and sometimes... I believe as Americans mm. that we are so microwaved yes. that we have, you know, Look fast food <laughs> and everything else <laughs> that we don't really understand the true move of the spirit when God actually steps in. There were people who found stuff. There were people who received right. funds. Remember, they, they were saying they how were they were being the so blessed. Right. Yeah. Um, and they were able to actually, God had revealed to them where the key was so that they could find. Right. So for me, that's the kind of God that I'm looking for, the kind of God for 2020 where he's going to reveal himself in everything that I do because I'm trying to have right alignment with him. When you're in the midst of his glory. Mm hmm. Time is not an issue. issue you right. look at your clock and know that, oh, I'm hungry at one o'clock. It's noon time, and you're there past an hour in your church service because and you don't want the pastor to go off. But if you're in the glory of God, of God that you don't want to leave because you're in his presence. And when you're in the presence of the creator, the almighty, that's really where you want to go after this temporal body that we have. And that's why it's so important when we talk about watch what you speak and right. say, because in Proverbs eighteen seven, he talks about a fool's mouth is his destruction mm. and his lips are the snare of his soul. So we should really embrace being in his glory and really look at Jabez when he just, I mean, just a little, these little guy, this little guy. I don't know. He might have been six four. It could have been four five two. It really don't matter. But the fact that the word they took time to acknowledge that there was this gentleman uh, with just two scriptures that really showed us how to prayer and be humble. That's awesome. And I think it's important to remember that we need to keep our legacy safe. That's one of the keys that uh, Pastor Wilkerson talks about. Because when you're in that arena, when you're in um, those situations, um, you have to be able to be prepared to deal and to move forward with some things and to jump into things. And just like anything else, you have to be prepared to be armed to deal with your situations. Because with the last part of that Part of that prayer for Jabez was that, oh, keep me from evil. So this was brilliant. We don't understand what it sometimes takes to have a sustaining life. And sometimes when I mention that we're microwavable, we get one little thing that comes against us and we're all falling apart. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. This person didn't do this. This person did that. But how many of you can stand yes. even when things are being thrown at you? Stand even when the situation is not going your way. Stand because as I I always believe that God will walk us through. So I think all of he this. Said it, I would never leave you nor never forsake you. you. That's all right. So without doubt, I believe that we need to look for greater opportunities 
sometimes for failure. Sometimes we need to see failure because we need to, people need to see that we walk through those situations. People need to see that we're being blessed for those situations. People need, um, uh, that's one thing, uh, and I'm going uh, to be quiet after this. No, one, go ahead. Go ahead. One of the things I'm that, enjoying this. One of the things that I, a lot of times you'll hear people say if they're looking for something new or they're looking for a home or they're looking for an apartment, they want a car, they so forth, they'll always say, but I don't think I'm going to get it. Right. Bite that tongue. <laughs> you need to believe that if that's what God wants. And, and it's so f- interesting to see how many of our young people oh. are saying that. So how are you protecting the legacy if your children, if the younger people around you are saying those things and you're not really chastising them? Because we always believe mm-hmm. that you speak what you believe you're going to have. That's it's not we say now faith is a substance of what? Things, things hope, hope for. for. Not things you already got because if you already got it, things aren't hoped for. So I just wanted to move that, that um, that last part of Jabez that he will keep us from evil and keep the legacy going that we can pass this on to our children, our grandchildren and so forth. Because he said, in the, in the scripture says for poverty he has given me wealth. He yes. is the Almighty. Uh, for sickness, uh, the Almighty has given me health. And for death, he has given me eternal life. Yes. And that's in Second Chronicles uh, 8 and 9, or Isaiah 53, uh, 5 and 6, or John 10, 10. Uh, all of them basically line up on the same thing because it's true unto, uh, according to the word of God. And the one thing that we don't do, we have to delight myself. So, yes, oh, I in love the that. Lord. Yes. Then He gives me the desire of my heart, and, and and so if you if you got to delight in the Lord and pray earnestly and yes. humble, your prayers will be answered. I believe that if you are not moving forward, you're moving what? We don't want to get stuck in reverse. Uh-oh. As our previous, um, I don't want to go so back that, there, but, right. yeah, but stuck in reverse. But one of the things that we tend to do is, you know, you always speak about putting on your whole body of armor, Pastor Gary. So if we're not keeping our armor on, just think, if you drop your sword and the enemy's coming against you, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle this? That means you need to uh, take on wisdom. You need to know that the trick is not to be deceived by the deceiver because that, he wants you to drop your your armor. He wants you to drop your sword. He wants you to take your helmet off so he can knock you out. He wants you to to run so that he can stab you in the back. So you have to have wisdom in dealing with the enemy. And I think that's why He got a lot of tricks. Oh, he does. But Jabez. He'll use people sometimes closest to you. Yep. But we need to remember that it says resist the devil and he will flee. I think the other thing is take our experience. You know for a certain fact that there are places and things and people that you shouldn't be involved in because you know that you will succumb. So you need to have good judgment. You need to have right alignment with God for him to continue to give you the guidance that you need. And then take your feelings. In a way, we need to take our feelings out of it. You know, uh, Tina Turner did say it, right? (laughs) What's love got to do with it? Because sometimes we need to keep our own self out of temptation. And we do that when we succumb to our feelings. Not saying that you can't love, you can't have fun, you can't have do all of those things. But sometimes our feelings get so in the way of doing things. I think that's why sometimes we have all these shootings going on because people are so offended. Offended. That's Uh, O-F-F-E-N-D. They're so offended that the first thing they, they start going to the first thing that they see or the first thing they have on them to hurt somebody else. You hurt them, but it's permanent. Not only does it affect the family of the person you killed, but it affects you because now you're going to prison. And trust me, we don't need any more of our young men going to prison. It's just unfortunate. Well, we're going to take a uh, another uh, break and uh, stay tuned uh, with the Stone Builders Hour. We'll be right back. 
My name is Anne-Marie Baker and I used to have severe excruciating right arm and neck pain thanks to spinal decompression therapy from Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. I no longer have any pain or discomfort and my issues were resolved without having any surgery. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center has helped me enjoy my life again. At Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, we unlock your potential to be the best version of you and build your body to excellent health. Hi, my name is Dr. Powell, and we take pride in giving you fast and friendly service that is tailored to your needs. We provide safe, comfortable, and effective treatments using state-of-the-art equipment. Life is full of adjustments, so get yourself realigned for better, healthier future today. Call 402-9061. That's 402-9061. Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center. Online at dynamicspineandwellness.com. Welcome back uh, with Pastor Gary and Elder JC. That's me. We've been talking about the J- prayer of Jabez. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm having a, we, it was a good study, and just know that um, you know Jabez was uh, a good example for all of us to consider. And one thing that you learn from doing that reading of the scripture, just know that in in uh, Colossians one nineteen, I am filled with the knowledge of mm. God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. His will is my prosperity. This was this was after Jabez. Yes. So Jabez got it, and just know that you know God delights in my prosperity. He gives me the power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant upon the earth. That's through you. You are his covenant. And that's in Deuteronomy 18, 18. And then my mind, this is you now. This is this is me. I'm not, I ain't even talking about y'all already. This is for me. My mind, Pastor Gary's mind, mm. is renewed by the word of God. All right. Therefore, going into 2020, <laughs> I forbid thoughts of failure right. and defeat right. to inhabit my mind. Thank you. That's Ephesians four twenty three. I'm making this person. I'm putting my mind, I'm putting my mind in All here. Right. We're only we're 2020. Oh God! I mean, 1956 was just around the corner. Seems like uh, 1975 was just around the uh, corner. 1972, 1985 was just. Oh God! Here we are getting ready to go to 2020. We're supposed to be in flying cars right now. I guess we're coming. getting there because yeah. they're they're driving mechanically anyways. But hey, but I'm not going to rabbit twelve here. But I am delivered. This is I am delivered. Thank you, Lord, from the power and authority of darkness. Now this day forward, I cast down reasoning and imaginations mm. that exalt themselves against the knowledge of the Almighty. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because one of the things you have to remember that when we oppose Satan, the one who wants you to sit, sat, yep, we'll sit. Uh-huh. that he is going to throw more attacks against you and have more spiritual attacks confronting you. So just remember that. And that's why I, got, I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of God's word. All right. Second Corinthians uh, 10, 3 through 5. So if we can just, I cast down all, mis- you know, we're, we're under attack right now. Praise God. But we know that God is in, in control. control. Yes. And sometimes he'll test you just like he tested Job. Yes. We got to do, do this thing on Job. Yeah, we do. But just as he did a thing with Job, the deceiver appeared with the sons of God to God, and God asked the deceiver, Satan, what you up to? And it was God who told Satan, have you tried my son Job? Have you tried my son, Pastor Gary? Have you tried my daughter, JC? Mm -hmm. Have you tried them? And Satan said, now why, man? You got them covered. I tell you what, you can do anything you want, but you can't kill them. Praise God. I love you, Lord. Thank you. And and one of the things we have to remember, therefore, we can trust the Almighty to answer our prayers by providing what he knows best that we need in harmony with his will, just, he, just as he did with Jabez's prayer. But remember, when you are asking for your increase, when you're asking for anything, 
that you also are making the devil aware of who you are. Yes. And so in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it talks about for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in the pulling down the strongholds, Mm. casting down arguments and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you have to be prepared for those things. You have to be prepared to know that God is in there. And you have to be ready to ask God to to protect you. He said to keep me from evil because it's going to be there. We need to seek out the Father to know that we are in His good graces and that when something comes against us, that we know that we're standing in the rights. Um, One other thing that uh, Paul talks about a lot, because remember, he's the one that wrote all of the Roman epistles and all of that. And he talks about becoming, uh, being armed against principalities and powers, just as I read you in 2 Corinthians um, 10.4. But he also knows that when we make a public spectacle of things that against the devil and we triumph over them that we have to be prepared to continue to triumph over them and that's Colossians 2 13 and 15 and hey we have the victory we do we have the victory praise God well as we get ready to uh, wrap up uh, this uh, session of the program uh, we just want to thank you for listening and also visit our new sponsor uh, Dr. Uh, Elton Powell at Dynamic Spine and Wellness Center, you can visit his website at www.dynamicspineandwellness.com or call his office at 850-402-9061. That's 850-402-9061. And tell him that the Stone Builders, uh, Pastor Gary and JC, referred you uh, to uh, uh, referred you to him because if you got some back pains, you want to lose weight, you've been in an injury, you got a arthritis, you got a headache, you know, you got a headache, you know, sometimes, you know, he's an alternative to having to go into the knife and go to surgery. That's something to sometimes consider. Sometimes you might want to consider uh, him as a consultation instead of uh, going to surgery. But, uh, hey, thank you for listening to the Stone Builders. And don't forget, you can also be a sponsor, too, and, and uh so into fertile ground at weedlivingstones.org or by mail P.O. Box 6747 Tallahassee, Florida 32314 and if you want to call us 850-219-0091 Praise God Thank you Jesus uh, Tune in uh, next Thursday We'll be here at same time, same place uh, praying, uh, praising uh, the Almighty and asking God to bless each and every one of you We're out Alright Bye.